as you know, for the buildings with transfer columns, I mean discontinuous columns, large slab or beam spans, large cantilevers or slanting columns, the approximate static vertical calculation, earthquake calculation may not be sufficient. Besides, the seismic cause require the use of model vertical earthquake um, in these scenarios. For example, bureau codes only allow the use of model vertical earthquake analysis. And for this purpose, we first introduced the vertical acceleration spectrum in protostructure that's accessible on the seismic parameters window. A vertical spectrum uh, is also reported in pre-analysis report. Second, we are now automatically calculating the vertical mass distribution. In other words, the vertical mass matrix. Slabs should be meshed to be able to consider the mass distribution accurately, of course. Um, we then automatically calculate the vertical vibration modes of the structure. Number of modes can be customized by the user. And the analysis post-processor allow you to examine the vertical mode shapes in a detailed manner. Of course, a mode superposition analysis in vertical direction is performed and results are obtained either in absolute terms or with dominant mode size. It's not finished. In order to avail the results for the design, we automatically create the combinations. The most important thing to consider in the combinations is using the alternating sign in the load combinations to catch the most critical scenario. This is a sample uh, project that I created that includes all the adverse structural configurations like a very long span beam, a large cantilever here, uh, a transfer beam uh, supporting a column, uh, a large span waffle slab, uh, gallery openings, uh, slanting columns, etc. So this is a this is a very typical example for a detailed vertical earthquake calculation. So. According to the most of the seismic codes, uh, when you encounter such a structure, you have to, or one of the configurations in a structure, you have to uh, resort to a model earthquake, earthquake uh, analysis. So how we do that in the loading section, um, in the loading generator, all you have to say is, uh, I want to add the vertical seismic cases in my project and I want to apply the model spectrum analysis method. So in that case, protostructure will calculate, will, will perform a vertical mode superposition analysis in the vertical direction. And also, if you check the, the combinations, all the vertical earthquake cases will be properly added to the combinations. For example, if you say edit, you will see that the vertical case is added with a 0 0.3 factor as well. And the other, other aspects, of course, if you if you perform a model earthquake analysis, uh, that means you will need a vertical spectrum. So in the spectrum interface, you have direction one, lateral, direction two, horizontal, these two, direction one and two, and vertical spectrum definitions. This, this will be calculated by protostructure again, uh, by of course, if you if the code if the seismic code has the vertical spectrum definition, protostructure will incorporate it here. Uh, and also in the analysis part, you have to specify number of vertical modes. Anyway, uh, so after you perform the analysis, um, you can check the analysis model. Let's see. Okay. So this is the analysis model created for this uh, project. Um, first things first, we can just look at the mode shapes. Let's animate this. Maybe we can exaggerate the animation scale like, like eight. Okay, uh, see in the first mode, only the large span, the uh, raffle slab is vibrating very dominantly. And the second mode, 
the second floor is vibrating, but the top floor is uh, vibrating in a different manner. So let's check the mode three. So now another slab comes into the play. And depending on the participation, the separate, separate vibration modes in vertical direction, uh, you will be seeing. Okay, so what we do actually, uh, when, we, when we check the uh, EZ load case, so now EZ load case is the combination of these mode shapes, of course, with their multiplied with their model participations. Uh, so as a result of different of these different vertical vibrations, we will be calculating a vertical earthquake effect. So let's stop this. So if if we check, for example, the let's get rid of the labels as well, and maybe displacements. Uh, let's check moments. So as you see, we have moments uh, on the members, but you, we cannot be sure about the sign because as you see there is a lot of different vibrations in the system so maybe one of the beams having a hogging moment another beam maybe having a sagging moment at the same time with different signs so you cannot in especially in mode superposition analysis you cannot be 100 percent sure about the uh, sign of the members of course uh, the signs are lost actually as a result of the CQC analysis. So what we do here, we bring back the signs by looking at the uh, dominant mode, uh, vibration mode. Anyway, let's check the axial loads, especially I would expect some axial loads in the slanting columns. So yes, we have. Um, but in order to calculate these effects, of course, uh, in order to calculate these effects, we have to calculate the uh, vertical masses. So as you see, at each joint, we have calculated the vertical mass MZ. So uh, MX and MY are required for the lateral analysis, but MZ is important uh, because you, you always have to have some MZ uh, mass regardless of the horizontal analysis. And also, if you want to capture the correct behavior we have to mesh you have to mesh the slab uh, to get the vibration modes uh, properly let's see and also for the uh, i mean also for the waffle slab at the intersection of the ribs we calculate the uh, vertical masses as well okay so this is this is pretty much what we do in the model uh, vertical earthquake analysis. So it's a very detailed, sophisticated uh, vibration analysis, actually.